Oh, don't mind me, I'm just playing my Game Boy. You know, when I'm not flinging foam, I like to enjoy a rousing uh, game of Bobo Innovation. Not to be confused with uh, the old Bobololo. <laughs> this, uh, this bad boy requires you to clean out the cartridges, throw in a fresh Drac game, maybe line that bad boy up. Then of course, I've got to introduce you to my favorite cheat code where you're going to firmly grasp the start and select buttons along with this back panel, pull like this, come forward like so. Having plugged in that cheat code, you line up a sweet, innocent Goomba here and uh, ooh, that A button is pretty spicy. Let's go ahead and uh, see what secrets the D-pad has in store for us. We've got this, um, this very exciting punch block over here and then uh, hit it up with a little bit of environmental damage. Lame, super lame. I did not hit it. So uh, effectively what I wanna talk about here is that this is a blaster. It's like the ultimate HVZ slash assassin blaster. I don't even know if we're allowed to play assassin at school anymore these days, but uh, any situation where you wanna be able to blast your buddies, but you don't want them to know it's coming. Instead, they'll just think that you're a kid from the 90s playing video games on your uh, your Game Boy Color. This might be just a Game Boy, uh, Game Boy, Game Boy, on account of the, uh, the very monochromatic screen, which, by the way, doubles as a targeting reticle. Yeah, you can't make that up. That's a targeting reticle Mario to help you aim both of your separate shots, given that each cartridge holds effectively two micro darts, Mine needs a little bit of breaking in, but I do want to thank Bobo Innovation for making a custom Drac cartridge that was very kind of him. I'm sure it's a zombie slaying game, right? And then like, these are just very cute little targets. You got Bowser and Peach. I don't know why you would be blasting Peach, but definitely Bowser and the Goombas going at it. And then you can replace your screen. If you were so bold, you could take the, uh, the Mario screen off of here. I'm not entirely sure how to do that. But there are alternate screens. I think you could pop it out from the back here. Sure looks like I could. What if I come in like this? Eh. I don't want to break it right now, so I'm not going to. But you've got the Mario screen. You've got a tactical rail screen so that you could put a tactical rail in there and put sights on it if you really wanted to line people up. The cartridges are, of course, your quick reload. And then you've got a blank screen here if that was more your speed as well. Overall, a relatively accurate looking Game Boy, like, I mean, a little chunkier on account of the necessity of squeezing two, uh, count them, two barrels down in there, but each one of these cartridges fires two shots. They're pretty sweet overall. You can fit micro darts in them. The ones that he sent are highly, uh, highly compact darts. They're like almost a third length darts or quarter length darts. You could almost Sabo them. And then here, Mine is not survived well from the trip all the way down from Canada, but uh, you can see that what this does is that this is a mystery block where when you shoot it, it'll pop up and this, uh, this spring detent flips one of these coins off. My issue is that I can definitely set the trap like so, but I'm having a hard time getting... Oh, well maybe... You know what? We're going to give it a shot. We're going to put the coin in there. So audio issues aside, we are going to test out this really cool kind of mystery block here. So we'll prime the blaster, click it back in, line this up like so, kind of hold it in place so that we know for a fact that it's not going to bounce off like that. And yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's just tough. I feel like uh, the mechanism is very smart, uh, but my tolerances due to shipping are not giving me the, uh, the pa-ching uh, noise that I'd be looking for. All the same, very novel, very cool, thanks for including it. And then, I mean, at the end of the day, you always have, you always have the brake block, right? You can line that up and it's always very satisfying to, to blow up. But overall, just a really cool shell configuration, just very different. Let's, uh, let's take it outside, let's put it over the crony. So we're out here and we're gonna get some chronograph readings off of the, uh, the old Nerf Tendo. Go ahead and slap that back in. We've got the standard cartridge. Jinx has been in a pretty silly, goofy mood, haven't you, JJ? Ah. She's 
gonna run all the way around and come back probably, which gives us just enough time to. <laughs> there you go. See. Oh, Jinx, I see you have the high ground. What will I do? So we've got one coming in at 69 and the other one coming in at 68. Elite performance out of something this custom, this cool is actually pretty impressive, all things considered. Let's put a couple down range, pull out the Bobo cartridge, throw in this Drac cartridge, which is loaded with uh, bamboo darts. Jinx could be anywhere. She could be lurking anywhere at any time, viewers. So the box is about 25 feet away. This isn't a performance blaster. This is a fun kind of gimmicky innovation in a really cool shell. So let's uh, let's go ahead and pop up our, uh, our sights here and see if we can line this up at all. Honestly, closer than any Elite Blaster I've reviewed recently. Not bad. And the ranges aren't terrible either. I mean, with a slight angle, we're getting pretty reasonable ranges, hitting about 35 feet. That's definitely, you know, your elite standard. I've gone ahead and loaded in some of these cut down darts from Bobo Innovation here. And uh, we'll go ahead, slam that cartridge home, give it a little meme sauce, prime, back down, and can we do both at once? It'd be fun to try. Hey, not bad, not bad at all. So the shotgun effect is really, you don't wanna stagger them if you're in a high intensity kind of schoolyard assassin game scenario. You really wanna bust it out before they even figure out that you're not playing old Mario. You wanna be like, pow pow. I don't know, I think that this product's great, guys. The, uh, the old Nerf Tendo is a perfect marriage of two uh, long lasting nostalgia toy brands. It's got all the deco and feel to make it seem like you have to do a double take and be like, wait, that's not. And, uh, and indeed it isn't. So I think this one's a lot of fun. It's a pleasant reminder that like in a world where half of these designers wanna differentiate themselves by making the most gun-like blasters they can, sometimes you can make the most toy-like blasters and ultimately I think make something really cool, really fun, really cute. I, uh, I absolutely dig it. I, uh, I don't think that you'll be seeing one, you know, bunkering anybody at the Foam Pro Tour anytime soon, but I definitely think uh, that this is a lot of fun and you'll be seeing it on a variety of different content creators' pages over the next few uh, weeks. But overall, just pretty cool. Comment down below, uh, algorithmically, of course. Tell me what your favorite Game Boy game was. Mine was Pokemon Yellow. Uh, I don't know, but everybody can't pick a Pokemon game. That's too boring. Pokemon is too iconic. Tell me, I mean, did you play the Dexter's Laboratory Game Boy game? Because that thing was was pretty dog water. But uh, lay it on me. Tell me what your favorite Game Boy game was. What'd you sink the most hours into? Uh, I think there was something pretty magical about having Pikachu follow me all around the Kanto region. But uh, overall, uh, this is pretty sweet. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and who knows, if you're really into gaming, you can check me out on Twitch TV backslash Vampire Drac. I'll be playing tonight. Much love, blast on, Drac out.